Hi everyone, welcome back. This is your Software Engineering 2 lesson on using key presses, which are the keys on your keyboard. I know every year people get really confused about like clicking versus things that you are tapping on the keyboard, but today we are pressing physical keys to make things change in our program. So please make sure that you guys have opened up the starter code. Once it's open, remember to go to file and click duplicate. Please remember that duplicate is only there if you are logged in, so make sure that you are logged in so you see that. If the login ever doesn't work for seeing duplicate, just refresh the page or head back to your work and try clicking it again. Um, once you've duplicated and you see copy and your username here, we are ready to get started. So set up your screen, get the YouTube video on half and your code on half, and let's start learning about key presses. Um, the first thing y'all should see when you click play is you should see four ellipses ellipses, just normal circles, spread out across your page, and we're going to make each one change differently. Together right now, you and I are going to try and make this first ellipse change color. So we see that that's listed in our code along here. Um, I know that I want it to change color when I press a key, so I'm going to go ahead and set up a variable for this circle. Please remember you can always hit pause or rewatch this video if I am typing too fast, but because I know there is something that lives on my screen all the time, right now these first four lines, 8 through 11, these control the fill, stroke, weight, and stroke of this first circle, which is at 100 on the X, 100 on the Y, and its diameter is 100. I'm going to create a variable that I can pop right into the fill in place of the 255. So I'm going to call this variable um, C1 color because that makes sense to me. And I'm going to make a note that this controls color of top left circle. Now, please remember variable names can be anything you want. You could have called this variable Listerine if you wanted to, but that would make a ton of sense in regards to the program. C1 color tells me that it's one of the circles. That's how I'm interpreting C1. And it's a variable that is controlling color. So once I have my variable, I need to give it a value and setup for what color it should be at the start of the program. And I will switch it up today. I will make it start at blue instead of magenta or yellow. I maybe, maybe I'll have it turn yellow. That seems like it would be a good option. Um, so I have this. Now I'm going to head down into my code and I'm going to make sure I use my variable. So on line 11, I need to take out the 255 and I need to plug in C1 color. And if I hit play, I should see that it is now blue. Biggest mistake I'm seeing from you guys when you ask me questions is you have such a beautiful setup and then you've forgotten to use your variable. So now that it's used, let's use it in a conditional to make things change. So I am heading down to this code along um, and I am going to do, I think, two different things with my key presses. Now, I just, first of all, want to say that normally when we do key presses in like normal school, when I can see you guys, we do this with something called nested conditionals, which is where we put a conditional inside of a conditional. And I don't think it's particularly harder than what we're about to do today, but it does raise a lot of syntax issues where you're dealing with a lot of curly braces, kind of one on top of another. And because we're doing this remotely, even if I was teaching this in a live lesson, I wouldn't be able to see all your computers. I want to make sure this is as easy as possible for you guys to try and get right. So we're maybe not writing the most efficient code today, but we are writing code that will behave the way we expect it to. It'll get things done um, and it, it should be more similar to what you guys have been seeing with other lines of code. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to write in um, if because I know that there's a condition here, and I'm going to put in my curly braces so that I have them for later. And now my condition is going to be a compound conditional where I am looking for multiple things to be true. So the first thing that I'm looking to be true is I want to know that a key is pressed. So very similar to mouse is pressed, I want to make sure that a key is pressed. I also want to make sure that I know what that key is. So I'm going to put an and in with the double ampersand. Please remember that you find that above the seven key, so you hold shift, hit seven twice, and that's how you get your and in JavaScript. So if the key is pressed and the key is R, I want my circle to turn red. So I'm going to put in C1 color equals color, and then I'm going to put in red, which is 255.00 for just a really basic red. Now when I hit play, before I test my key 
presses, which again, I'm pressing keys on the keyboard, I need to click somewhere on my canvas. Your canvas needs to know that you're talking to it and not trying to type in the editor. So please click on your canvas and then press R on your keyboard. Once you've pressed it, that circle should turn red. Now you'll notice if I press any other key right now, nothing happens. Um, and that's because I have only taught the computer to change when I am pressing the R key. If I did not have this AND statement here, I would be able to press any key, so right now I'm hitting Q, and it would change color. It's only because I have the AND that specifies that my key should be R, that when I click and then press R, it changes to red. Now, right now there is no way to change it back to blue, so let's go ahead and put an else if statement in here. I'm going to say else if, I'll set up all my syntax first, I like to line up my parentheses because it makes me nervous to have them messy. I'm going to say else if key is pressed and the key is B, then C1 color should be blue. Now, when I click over here, I can press R and it changes to red. I can press B and it changes to blue. So this has nothing to do with where my mouse is. This is all about me pressing keys on my keyboard in order to make things happen. Now, what you guys are going to be doing, you're going to be writing your own conditionals for the remaining three ellipses. So the only catch with this is you can no longer use the R and B keys. They already have jobs. For all of these other three shapes, you need to pick any other colors that will make them change. Um, any other, sorry, any other colors, any other keys that will make them change based on the challenges that you're presented with. So please make sure you are choosing wisely. Um, if you have any questions, come to office hours or drop me an email. And if you are interested in seeing nested conditionals, because it, it is a little bit more efficient, it will save you writing a few extra lines of code, please come to office hours and we can talk that through together. All right, guys. Bye.